Hey, beautiful people, and welcome back. Congressional Research Service, the Library of Congress. Here's the reference number. Here's the year. You can go get a certified copy of this yourself. Grace Commission. Commission always deals with finance. In response to numerous requests for information on the Grace Commission and its report, or for a summary of the summary report issued on June 12, 1984. We have compiled the enclosed packet of materials. This includes statement from the Grace Commission summarizing the 2,478 recommendations on ways to save $424 billion of wastes. In quotes, that waste is making reference to these accounting, these monies, and the federal government over three years, as outlined in the 656 page two volume summary report. We're letting you know what this whole commission report about that was requested by somebody. What it's all about is regarding what they consider waste. And that waste is $424 billion. What is this waste that's worth $424 billion that they are referred to? Where is it coming from? How is it being used? And why exactly is this much considered waste? Before we continue, you've probably heard at some point people expressing that public servants, you are our servants because you are using the people's taxes to build these buildings, we pay your salary. Is that really true? Remember, this is a private sector commission. They just changed their name to Grace Commission so it could look more incognito. But in truth, to let you know, look, we were formerly known as the President's Private Sector Servant on cost control. How the amount that's being spent and it's being received, the incoming and outgoing of the T-Ledger, how it's being controlled. Now, why would the president have a private sector? That is another subject matter. But let's deal with the supposition of the public and them being public servants. And people thinking that these entities out here can be held liable just by mere fact that you refer to them as public servants, or the mere fact that you're saying that the taxpayers are paying your salary, this building is built by the taxpayer. One, by your own self-confession, you've admitted that you are a slave. If you subscribe to that concept, that the, you are a taxpayer who is paying their salary and the cost of your tax constructed the building they work at. A taxpayer is a serf, S-E-R-F, a slave. Your sweat equity, your labor, your hard earning is being taken by someone else. Because you're subject to them. Now out of your mouth, you are voluntarily saying, I am your slave, so you should do what I say, no, 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 no. If that was really the case, if they were taking something from you that you couldn't speak about in any other way, but to just go along with the ride of having federal tax, state tax, FICA, Social Security, Medicare tax, taken from you, and in some case your children, some, some case your time, in some case your automobile, in some case your house, Everything that you own being taken away from you. And at a later date, you want to use that as a sense of pride to make demand? Do you see 
the ebbs and flow of the relationship do you see that there's a misconception there automatically being a taxpayer is not something you take pride in not at least to the extent where you want to demand something from someone because you are purporting that your tax is what's keeping them in business to the contrary your tax is not what is keeping them in business because one they consider you a slave if you're a taxpayer and two they are functioning in the private sector and this is what they think about your tax a waste this is just a report for this specific year now and this is still going on where's the interesting part that highlights the whole thing further there is not much more that can be extracted from high income brackets as most of us probably already know the more you move up the bracket of income the more you're taxed unless you get to a specific point which is like an apex that you jump through and then the taxing becomes practically non-existence and if you get to get to that point or if you have gone to that point and you still know how to operate in commerce you know how to not qualify for tax the majority of the people walking to and fro this earth waking up sunrise sunset do fall under the tax bracket that tax bracket is through the internal revenue code that is expired which we went over in the past and that internal revenue code is what's used along with the Social Security Act to tax people based on their income there's a separate definition for income but that's not what we're talking about here they tell you there is not much more that can be extracted from high income brackets <laughs> if the government took 100 percent of all taxable income beyond the seventy five thousand dollars tax bracket not already taxed it would get only 17 billion and this confiscation which would destroy productive enterprise would only be sufficient to run the government for just seven days and interpret that to you we're saying we can tax as much as we want but even then it would only last us for seven days for our operation cost every business has an operation cost amounts that's expendable they're telling you even if we tax these people as much as we want this is the amount that we calculate we'll be able to get and even then it would only last us for seven days here's the part that really blows one's mind resistance to additional income tax will be even more widespread if people were aware I mean they're saying if only these people knew what we really do with their income tax all the money that we've been siphoning from them that we'll be using to ledger all these things that we're doing that some of them loosely know about but the majority of them do not know about if they knew about the following they would resist paying income tax they would resist contributing to income tax because that's what it is it's a contribution that's a terminology in itself and these are the things that if the people who pay taxes contribute taxes know about they would begin to resist the contribution of income tax resistance to additional income taxes will be even more widespread if people were aware that okay, now keep in mind these these are the words issued by the Library of Congress preserved by the Library of Congress specifically the Congressional Research Service within the Library of Congress they preserved the finding of a commission a federal agency and that federal agency is saying look 
we can tax as much as we want and it's only gonna last us for seven days for our operational costs. And even then, if these people on the other hand even know what we're doing with it or how it's being used, they will resist it. And what is that thing that would compel or cause people to resist it? These are not my words. These are simply their words that is public information and is freely available to you. One third of all their taxes are consumed by waste and inefficiency in the federal government as we identified in our survey. One third of all their taxes, the taxpayers, sweat equity that they're taking from them, anywhere from 10% in some case, all the way to 50%, in some case, 60% of your sweat equity being taken from your paycheck being taken, whether it's through child support or just through FICA, federal, state tax, or you yearly paying that vehicle sticker, or you paying that property tax, whatever form of taxation, sales tax on a CD level every time you buy something, yep, all of it, one third of all their, it says all now, there are different types of taxes now. Yeah, Congress is the only one who has the power to apportion and you know enforce the, the fixed types of taxation according to the Constitution. But there are many other types of taxation that they are enforcing against the public at large. And they are verbalizing an overall circumstance. And make reference to the fact that if you knew about it, you would resist it. This is what they're saying. One third of all their taxes is consumed by waste and inefficiency in the federal government as we identified in our survey. Another one third, remember this is out of a, of all their taxes escapes collection from others as the underground economy blossoms, the underground economy blossoms, you should ask yourself, what in the world are they referring to when they say underground economy? That's causing one third of taxes of those who are being taxed that are being collected. Another one third of all their taxes escape collection from Others, as the underground economy blossoms in direct proportion to tax increase, then alternatives are being taken in certain things in life and places ever more pressure on law abiding taxpayers, aka slaves, promoting still more underground economy. Many people will keep finding alternative means. The more we keep pressuring them, despite the fact that it's all going to waste, and no matter how much we tax them, it does it basically does us no good because we consume so much so we have to make them a big consumer than we are so that we can keep taking more from them but even after all that one third of it is consumed this this word is very important consumed by waste and inefficiency it's not being used for anything that's good anything efficient towards the forward motion of those people making all those contributions. Heck, even to us, because it only lasts us for seven days. That's what they're telling you here. And then they go on to give you another fraction of it, which is another one third in addition to this. Another one third of all their taxes escapes collection from others. As the underground economy blossoms in direct proportion to tax increase and places even more pressure on law-abiding taxpayers, promoting still more underground economy, a vicious cycle that must be broken. Hey, these people are finding alternative means to our form of slavery. We have to break it. You know how you break a cycle? You break the people themselves. In order for you to break a behavioral pattern, you have to break the source that's creating that behavioral pattern. That is the everyday man and woman. And they consider your cycle 
or your impulse or your natural intent to balance the pain that you're experiencing through taxation by way of underground economy. I mean, you're finding alternative means. I Meaning you're not even soliciting them in business now, you're going somewhere else. That is what they classify as underground economy. Because it is a direct proportion to tax increase, I meaning it is a natural checks and balance system that just plays out based on the fact that people are getting tired of being taxed. Remember, even though they're being taxed so much, the people are being taxed so much, it is not being efficient. And it's not even sustaining them for more than a week. We're still hungry is what they're saying. The commission has done all this survey of their serfs, their slaves, and have realized they're not working hard enough because they're not sustaining us well enough. And we realize through our research that, whoa, wait, a good amount of these people that we rely on to keep their rat wheel of slavery going are taking another route in life. And we consider this to be a vicious circle that we must break with two thirds of everyone's personal income, taxes wasted or not collected. They keep letting you know that the majority of all these taxes are wasted. 100% of what is collected is absorbed solely by interest on the federal debt and by federal government contributions to the transfer payments. Ooh, transfer payments to who? A lot of people talk about the IMF, the IMF, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. They're the bad guys. They're that bald, fat supervillain in the corner of the dark room with his fat cat while petting it. That's the IMF right there. So they're letting you know, look, we are debtors. So we need more people to act as our debtors so we can pay off our debt. In other words, all individual income and tax revenues are gone before one nickel is spent on the service which taxpayers ex expect from their government. Then your expectation of what you think your government is is completely flawed. Even if you think you've already know that, your expectation is still flawed nonetheless. Let me explain to you why. That, that IMF you're talking about, that they're fraud, they're connected to the Vatican, the church and state, all that. Let's go to the Constitution. Article 6 of the United States Constitution. Debts, the Supremacy Clause, and oaths. Specifically debt. All debts contracted and engagement entered into before the adoption of this Constitution before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation, Articles of Confederation. So, here is a commission doing a survey letting, letting you know that the majority of the contribution of the everyday man and woman who are being taxed, it's going directly to the federal debt according to the Constitution. Meaning, the signatories to the United States Constitution, the supposed founding fathers, right, who came from England, Great Britain, because of the way they were being treated, so they pursued life and happiness here in the North America, right? But in order for you to create a trade company, like the Virginia Trade Company, the, the West Indian Trade Company, the West Indian Trade Company, the tobacco companies, and do business so that you could properly pursue happiness and liberty. You need some type of finance and support. So someone who had power predominantly on the land that you're coming to pursue happiness had to support you. And certain things were created to keep you bound 
within a certain geographical limit within a certain geographical area and then consequently there were addendums to that first contract well not first but the contract that is making reference here to here which is Articles of Confederation and that addendum is the United States Constitution in addition to the Confederation and the Association like Articles of Association when you, when you create LLCs right so now you the supposed founding fathers and your posterity your children automatically perpetuate the status of being a debtor aka perpetual, perpetual union articles of confederation and since you and your children are that debtor because you've entered into an agreement on a new land that someone's relative has allowed you to come here and do commerce you are automatically a debtor and everyone else who has allegiance to you or your children would also be a debtor this survey perfectly aligns with article 6 of the United States Constitution the debt clause with two-thirds of everyone's personal income taxes wasted or not collected 100% of what is collected is absorbed solely by interest on the federal debt and by federal government contribution to transfer payments several questions you should ask yourself could this somehow be related to the interest that you're paying with your monthly bills because you're not paying the principal on those bills you're paying mostly interest could this somehow being traded interrelated with inflation could this somehow be interrelated to most of the woes people experience and most importantly who is a payment being transferred to and who really controls IMF that everyone talks about know the true story behind this instrument called the Constitution the Articles of Confederation Association and all other treaties that's been created attached to it no not just limited to treaty of peace and friendship not that and no not just limited to the treaty of Marrakesh yeah, those have significance, but there are more. So ask yourself, who are the payments being transferred to? Why are you paying tax? And why are they letting you know that your tax is a waste and is effectively insufficient to even run what you consider your government? that you want to compel someone to perform because you think because you're a taxpayer someone owes you something if they were to take all you and your fellow taxpayers amounts it would last them for seven days and this was back in the late 1900s this report was created in 1984 This is in the Library of Congress. Anyone wants to come with you? So those are the questions that might somewhat appear a bit challenging. But the challenge is not from the one who's reading this to you listen. The challenge should then be taken like the flow of water and directed to those who want to tax you. Those questions are proposed to you, not so you can feel like someone is insulting you, but more so you can realize that why is somebody coming to you compelling to put levy liens against your properties, effect, sweat equity, 
and your substantive rights. If in truth, all of that goes to something that really doesn't benefit you in the first place, you would contribute taxes because it's, it's, there's supposed to be a reasonable expectation that that contribution is supposed to benefit you and the society, the public at large, right? And so that you could delegate authority, supposedly, as one of the people. And in turn, that compels performance because you've created a value. One of two things compel performance, liability or value. Liability either compels performance or value compels performance. In the case of taxation, you are bringing the value into it by the way of your sweat equity. And so reasonably you expect someone to then give something back to you of proportion, of equal amount, equal value. It's like alchemy. You put something of equal value out just to recreate something of the same value. <clears throat> but they've just let you know that it is considered waste. According to the Grace Commission, aka the President's Private Sector Survey on Cost Control, preserved by the Library of Congress, specifically the Congressional Research Service. Once more, there goes your reference, and there goes the date. Yet another tool you can use when someone is compelling performance based on some form of taxation. Outside of the fact that the Congress is only the one that has the constitutional power to tax anyone, based on the specific types of taxations warranted in the Constitution. Here's another tool for you. Outside of the fact that the Internal Revenue Code has expired, here's another tool for you. The Internal Revenue Code and the Constitution that governs this corporation that everyone hates, called the United States, clearly lets you know in accordance to the words of the agency of that same United States preserved by their own library of the legislative department, Congress, they also let you know that all your taxes is doing nothing for us. So another question you ought to ask yourself is, what then is the purpose and why are people nonetheless being taxed? There's more to this whole thing than what meets the eyes. The fear, the suffering, the anguish, the hate, the guilt, the loss, the sorrow, the anger, the pain, the despair that comes with taxation and all the other acts of people having to wake up, travel to that workplace, deal with people they can't put up with and try to compensate for lack of taking care of themselves physically and mentally all those harsh attributes have value to them in a world that cannot be observed with the five senses there is more to all of this than what you and I observe on a mundane level. Feelings are commodities. Fear, anger, all these vice of emotion, human attributes are food. So if you don't begin to function on a realm beyond the mundane, you will remain in the mundane. Despite all evidence pointing you to the fact that everything that's being done on the mundane on your end and theirs is basically irrelevant. You want things to become relevant and you want to really put all those hermetic principles to use when it comes to the mind and all that. 
you must first begin to comprehend that you must work harder in a world that you cannot observe with your five senses than you do in the world that you observe with your five senses. Best of luck. Hey, and also don't forget to join my Patreon if you haven't. There I go through documents that I have used personally successfully and videos that I do not post here on YouTube that are in many ways private in nature and also I go through live audio interactions and video interaction of my own experience with certain things and I also have a website where you can go through a list of documents or services if you need them and these videos that are posted on YouTube are also uploaded on Anchor you can listen to it via audio means and there's an Instagram page and a Facebook page the link is on the screen and in the description take care and best of luck